Dear students, this lecture series is all about the artificial neural networks. Before getting into the subject, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. T. N. Prabhakar, Professor and HOD of Sri Sai Ram College of Engineering, Anakal, Bangalore. As I already said, this lecture series will be on Artificial Neural Network. It's an open elective from the department of ECE having the subject code 18EC642. Without getting into the other details, let us switch on to the subject. 18EC642 Artificial Neural Networks. The course objective of this particular subject is to understand the basics of artificial neural networks and we have to compare this with the human brain function. The second one is to acquire the knowledge on generalization and function approximation of various artificial neural network architectures. Basically how our brain functions and how an artificial neural network or an artificial brain can function that mimics the function of the human brain. The third objective is to understand the reinforcement learning and using this neural networks. Normally we people start learning new things every day and how we can train the neural networks to learn new things. And the fourth point is to acquire knowledge of unsupervised learning using neural networks. Of course, there are basic two things are there. A supervised learning system where a teacher is going to teach what is right and what is wrong. There is a concept of unsupervised learning so that the system should automatically learn by itself. Say for example, you are going to a new place and you don't know the language. So what you will be doing? Without any supervision, you will try to learn new things one by one or you will be basically classifying things. So this is actually a safer place and you go there to some other place, maybe around 50 meters. Again, that is actually a safer place. So accordingly, you will be classifying the points, safer place and non-safer place. So in that case, using without any supervisor, we can easily learn some points. So that is actually called as an unsupervised learning and of course there is one more point is also there something like reinforced right. So it is actually a, we can call it as a semi supervised learning also right. So these are all the course learning objectives. The syllabus in your model 1 that consists of the study of biological neuron of course what is the architecture of a neuron, uh, what is the, actually the function of it and how I can mimic the function of the artificial neuron, in, uh, biological neuron into an artificial neural network and what is meant by the activation function and what is the basic architecture of a feed forward and feedback uh, networks, what is, what is meant by convex sets, what is meant by convex hull and linear separability, how I can use this neural networks for separating things and suppose if the system is non-separable if the system is non-linear, say for example in XR problem, how I am going to use the multi-layer network for separating the non-linear separable problem, how to tackle that one. So this is actually the part one of my the model one. And in the second part, we will be learning about a few learning algorithms, how the system learns, how the system finds out the error and how it tries to correct and the gradient descent rules simply means how the error getting reduced to zero or a minimum value and what is the learning objective of this threshold logic networks, perception learning algorithm and the perception convergence theorem. So this is there in your model one. We will get into this model one now and before getting into this, what is actually the basic difference between a linear system and a non-linear system because we most probably deal with a non-linear systems here. So a non-linear system, simply we, we every day we use a linear system, right? What does mean by a linear system? The basic definition is if the output is proportional to input, then the system may be a linear system, right? Say for example, the input increases, then there is the output is also increasing, right? That is actually a simple linear system. Say for example, if you are having a fan regulator and you are just increasing the speed or you are turning the regulator by 10 degrees, so the fan RPM also proportionally increase. In that case, the system is actually a linear system, we can say. Some cases, say for example, the same fan, maybe after some one or two years, what will happen? Even if you turn your regulator, right, the speed will not vary for a long time. 
and in the last 10 degree of span the fan speed actually immediately increases rapidly right so there is no relation between the input and the output so in that case the system is actually a non-linear system so as per the definition any system that obeys the law of superposition and the law of homogeneity is called as a linear system or in simple words where the input and output can be explained by some linear equations or some basically some equations may be known as a linear system but most of the systems in the world are non-linear right so there is no relation between the input and output right and how you can control all those non-linear systems suppose if you want to control a non-linear system then basically you should be more non-linear than the system right i think the our brain is actually a beautiful example or a classic example for a non-linear system and again there is one more category is also there we have time variant and time invariant system say for example time invariant system means at all the time right the system will be at this will be having the same characteristics but the human is actually a highly non-linear and a time variant say for example some person will be in a good mode always in the morning or some person will be always good after the in the afternoons so with respect to time the mindset of the person is actually continuously varying so if a system is highly non-linear and highly time variant right so a computer equation may not be useful for controlling it or finding it out in those cases we can go for this non-linear systems and that the, for that purpose we can go for this artificial neural networks yes to, to start with we will just start from the known things right what is intelligence and I think you students are very intelligent, right? So everybody will be knowing what is the meaning of the intelligence. So the basically the intelligence is from this. I think it is visible to you. Even if it is not, I can read it for you. The ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills, right? So every human being is, a, he, can, he or she can be able to acquire the new knowledge, right? Each and every day from each and every process we will be getting continuous knowledge about it and if you can learn new things and if you can apply it suitably then that person is actually an intelligent right and other definition of course the human intelligence can be defined as through intelligence the human possesses the cognitive abilities to learn something he can form a concept he can understand a few things and he can apply this whatever he understood he can apply this logic for some reasons and including the capacities to recognize patterns, plan, innovate, solve problems and so many things. So whatever we do in the regular life, everything we learn and we apply, right? So how to take a, how to fill the bank chalan, right? Actually, it's a new process when the first time we go to the bank, then we learn it slowly. How to operate this computer system? Again, we don't know. We purchase a new mobile. We don't know about the mobile, but we slowly understand the concept. So the human brain actually what it, does it's cognitive right so it's a totally new one so it simply learns the thing learns the concepts understands it and try to make use or try to use how to make use of that particular device so this is there actually called as a human intelligence there we can call it as natural intelligence now we will just check a simple thing to make uh, to check your intelligence we can say a human intelligence right so here actually there is a simple uh, stick, right? So a few sticks are available and you have to make three sticks, uh, three sticks and you have to make three squares, right? A simple thing. I think you can just think over. You have to move only three sticks and you have to make three squares. Whether we can do that? Of course, you should be able to do that. I am giving some 10 seconds time for you to think over. Hope this time is enough. enough. I think we will just give the answer, right? So on the left hand side, I think you can see the normal, uh, I mean the square. On the right hand side, I have just moved two sticks, three sticks, one, two, and three, so that I will be getting three squares are available. Now, if you could find this out, then actually you are intelligence. So what you did, you understood what is actually the pattern available, then you gave your work to your brain, and it just uh, thought of and how to move with, or which are the sticks to be moved so that I will be getting three squares, right? So this is actually a simple problem and if you can solve it, then you are actually an intelligent, fine. We will see another example here. 
So there is actually a missing number, right? So the first row, 3, 4, 5 are the inputs, the output is actually 17. In the second row, 4, 6, 8 are the inputs and the output is 32. In the third row, 2, 9, 6 are the inputs and what will be the output? Again, I am giving some 10 seconds, try to find out what is the, what's the combination, right, between the input numbers and the output numbers. Yes, now I think uh, we should have guessed this, right? So the first number may be, of course, there may be many combinations may be there. Just I am giving one example for this. So the first number is, suppose if it is A, B, C, then A into B plus C will be the answer, right? So here actually 3 into 4, 12 plus 5, 17. 4 into 6 is 24 plus 8 is 32. 2 into 9 is 18 plus 6 is 24. So, 24 may be the one of the answer, right? Right. So, this 24 may be the answer for this particular puzzle. So, for these types, right? So, you are actually thinking of something. You are using your brain. You have some relations and from the first two, two examples, you learnt what is the relation between the input numbers and output numbers. And for the third case, based on the knowledge you acquired, you try to find out what is actually the missing number, right? So this is where actually you are going to use this particular uh, puzzle, right? Yes, so what is actually artificial neural networks? So this is what, whatever we have seen is actually the natural intelligence or the human intelligence. Now what is actually artificial intelligence? The artificial intelligence is, there will be some input of course for you to learn. The input may be a data, the input may be from a sensor or the input may be the images, whatever it is. And instead of you taking the inputs, all these inputs will be given to some machine, right? Some artificial machine, we can call it as a machine. And based on these inputs, the machine learns a few things and accordingly, it will try to give some outputs. The output may be action, the output may be a movement or the output may be a text. Right? So, this is what actually the basic idea about what is actually in artificial intelligence. So, we have seen what is intelligence, we have seen what is human intelligence, now we are seeing what is artificial intelligence. Right? So, artificial intelligence is we are going to take a machine and we are going to give suitable inputs to the machine so that the, input, the machine learns a few things so that it can suitably act in terms of action, movement or text. Now, when we compare this artificial intelligence to the natural intelligence or brain, right? So, what is actually the comparison between our brain, which is actually the natural intelligence and the artificial intelligence, right? So, these are all some of the differences. Of course, a few points we have taken it from the YouTube and from so many other sources, uh, only in the academic interest, right? So, here actually just you can see here, the brain has the massive parallelism. The first point is, it works in parallel, right? So, for example, you are actually having a computer. The computer, what is actually the size of your the processor? Actually, it may be having a quad core or it can be an octa core, right? So, suppose if quad core is there, then it can perform quad computations, four computations. Octa core means there will be eight cores will be there, may do some eight different functions at the same time. So, there is only one processor and the simultaneous operations will be very limited. So, we can call it as a non-parallel architecture. On the other hand, the brain is having the massive parallelism, right? So just to count this number, 100 followed by 9 zeros, that many cores will be available in my brain, right? And all these cores can simultaneously work. So just think of this, right? So the extreme bandwidth is possible here. Of course, these cores are connected by so many connections, right? So, this much data will be passing through your brain from one point to some other point. But on the other hand, here in the normal computer, the bandwidth is going to be very low, right? Or the simultaneous data that is passing through is very limited. And here actually, we are having approximately 10 power 9 transistors. I think you should be knowing what is electronics, what is transistor and all those things. So basically, it uses a transistors. On the other hand, 
the brain is having approximately 10 power 18 transistors which is maybe called as a neurons right so 10 power 18 neurons will be there which will be simultaneously working then the other point is actually the normal computer will be using a synchronous clock right it's a synchronous clock so there will be a clock say that may be 2.4 gigahertz that may be your operating frequency of your system but your brain is actually asynchronous so there is no particular clock signal is there so it is asynchronous can take any decision at any point of time right that is actually another difference then your uh, present day computer where which we are going to implement for our artificial intelligence simply uses a static hardware right so it can be an i3 processor or i5 or i7 whatever it may be the hardware will not change but here the brain has an adaptive hardware so there is actually a neuroplasticity a technique or a method is available through which the brain connections are sometimes they are made sometimes they are actually broken right so the connection continuously changes so we can call it as an adaptive hardware then your AI using a computer will be making use of digital and linear equations right but the brain can have analog and a digital system or signals we can see. I think you should be knowing right what is actually an analog signal and what is meant by a digital signal. So analog signal means it is a time varying signal with respect to time the signal will be varying any signal it can be a periodic signal or a periodic signal or you, have, you might have heard about the sine wave, triangular wave all those things. So everything can be called as a time varying signal so that is actually analog signal. And a digital signal is actually simply zeros and ones. So it's logic 1, logic 0, true or false. So your computer will be using only digital signals and some linear equations where the output can be related to input by some equations. right? But on the other hand, your brain can handle both analog signal as well as digital signal. It can take decision in analog or in a fussy way. It can decision, it can take decision in a digital way, either yes or no. So both the things it is actually possible and the next one is here actually the normal computer it is a reliable unit right suppose if you do the same input thousand times and you ask the system to give the output even after thousand times or for all the thousand times it is going to give the same output right because if the computation is same the input is same the algorithm is same so the output should also be same so it is reliable but here your human brain is highly unreliable this is what actually is said it's actually time variant system right morning you will be in a good mood you will be taking nice decisions afternoon your mood may not be there so you will be behaving in a totally different way so the output is not reliable it will vary depending upon the time right and then the speed of the operation again just check this it is 10 billion operations per second a, a nominal number right so it can perform up to 10 billion operations per second. Here the speed of operation is less than 1000. But the main difference is here it is a single process working. Here actually so many lakhs or billions of transistors or we can call it as a neurons are working together. And the power consumption here actually it is around uh, uh, 10 watts. Here it is around 100 watts. And in terms of frequency, I think you know the normal frequency of your system, which will be in the terms of some gigahertz, right? 2.4 gigahertz or 3.6 gigahertz, whatever it may be. But here, the operating frequency of the brain is only in terms of some hundreds. How I am getting this number? Just, just see here. So, what are the waves available in the brain? I think if you have uh, seen the, some VEG signal or you, if you place the electrodes in a suitable place and try to tap out some different waveforms, right? So here actually you can see the delta rhythm, theta rhythm, alpha rhythm, mu, beta and gamma, right? So these are all actually different waveforms and the frequency of this particular waveform is 1 to 4 hits and this uh, delta rhythm is normally available in adults when they are actually sleeping, right? So the operating frequency is 1 to 4 hits. Then the theta rhythm, it is in deep meditation or unconscious material. If it is there, then the frequency will be in the range of 4 to 7 hits. 
and if you have your eyes closed and if you are in a relaxed mood then you will be getting this alpha rhythm and the frequency of your brain function or your EEG signal may be something around 8 to 12 hertz. Then I am having the mu rhythm for routine motor activities, right? Without thinking anything, you are doing some physical work. So in the range, it is going to be 8 to 13 hertz. Then if you are having this active thinking, right? And if you are trying to solve some problems, then it will be in the range of 13 to 30 hertz. It's called a beta rhythm. And suppose if you are thinking very hard, right? If, if you are having or if you are very stressed and you are thinking of some something uh, very big, right? So in that case, the frequency is going to be greater than 30 hertz, maybe around 100 hertz or something like that, where I am going to have the intense mental activity. So you just think of it, right? So your brain is working in the, uh, in the frequency range of 100 hertz or so, while your computer is working at 2.4 gigahertz or something like that. So many gigahertz are there. But since the brain is having a parallel processing, right? and your normal computer is having a serial processing. What does it mean by serial processing? I think I can just give an example, right? Say for example, you have written a C program, right? So you are getting some numbers, do some computations, store the results or print the results and you are going to end the program. So the first line will be executed, then second line will be executed, third line will be executed. So it will be executed line by line. So in that case, it is actually called as a sequential execution, one by one execution. Suppose, if you are going to have some 100 gates, logic gates, I think you should have studied about uh, XOR gate, AND gate, OR gate, so many things, right? So you have designed a digital circuit and you have connected some 100 gates. And in that case, actually what happens? Suppose if you are giving the inputs, all the 100 gates, right? What are maybe the number of gates, right? So all the 100 gates, in my example, will be working concurrently. When the first gate takes some input and gives some output, the last gate also will take some input and will give the output. So concurrently all the gates are working. That is actually called as parallelism, right? So because of this concurrency, because of this parallelism, your brain can take more complex decisions, more complex non-linear decisions, right? I think you should be measuring this, right? What is actually the IQ of a general pers person, we can say. Right? So, in those cases, brain can take complex decisions. For example, even if some image, right, you are seeing a person from the backside, only you are seeing his uh, backside, then you can guess who is that particular person. Or some person is calling you over the phone and he is not revealing himself who is that, but from his tone, from his voice, you can recognize who is he. So, in those cases, actually, you are not given any inputs, but you have learnt a few things in the back. So using those knowledge, you will try to identify who is that particular person speaking at the other end of the phone. Right? So this much computation is very possible, very much possible if you are going to have the common brain, but which is very difficult to implement in the artificial intelligence. Right? Say for example, one more example also I can say, you are given a paragraph of 10 lines. Right? So a 10 line paragraph is given. You have to just go through this paragraph and you have to give the summary of that particular 10 line paragraph in one or two lines. Now you can do that, right? Because you just, you are reading the 10 pages, 10 lines, sorry, 10 lines and you understand what is the meaning of those 10 lines, what is the intention of that particular lines and you will give just the intention only in one or two lines. That is possible. So you have summarized, but the computer, it's very difficult to do. Why? Because the computer cannot understand the process, right? So you read the 10 lines, you understood what is the concept. So since you are under, you have understood, you are giving the summary. But the computer, it, straight away it cannot understand because it doesn't have any intelligence. So in that case, actually what happens, it can pick some words. Instead of 100 words, it, it will give some 10 words that it, it can give it. But understanding the concept, and summarizing the concept, it is very difficult to implement in the computers in which point we are going to introduce the artificial intelligence. Right, I think this will give an uh, overall idea about what is actually an artificial intelligence. But our subject is artificial neural networks. Whether everything is same, just we will see now. 
yes. This gives an idea about so many terms. I think all these are thrust areas we can say. Artificial intelligence, ML stands for machine learning, right? The third one is the neural networks. The fourth one is called the deep learning, right? So, there, so they are all different fields are of course available here. So what is actually the relation between all these things? So far we discussed about artificial intelligence. So the artificial intelligence is making a system to learn. That is actually called as the machine learning. You are going to take a machine and we are going to give some inputs so that the machine learns of new concept, new things. The third one is the neural network. The machine consists of a neural network which is going to mimic the function of your brain. So how the brain, in the, in the brain, the neurons are connected. In a similar way, whether we can connect so many nodes, so each and every node can depict a neuron. And the other point I said is the brain is completely non-linear. How I can introduce a non-linearity in my computation or in my computer? So everything we are going to study in the third topic that is called neural networks. Of course, deep learning is very similar to neural network. The only thing is, in a neural network, how many layers are available? Suppose you are having more than three layers or four layers, right? Then we can call it as a deep learning. So this is actually gives a basic idea about what is actually the artificial intelligence, what is machine learning, what is neural networks, and what is meant by deep learning. And our point of interest is actually the only this particular neural networks. So in this particular subject, we are going to study about what is actually a neural network, how we are going to form it, right? And how the non-linearity can be incorporated and how I can train my neural network, how it learns, right? Whether it is going to be a slow learner, again, like a student, right? It can be a slow learner, it can be a fast learner. We can actually have a small parameter eta, right? That's actually called as a learning factor. So you can increase or decrease the learning factor so that you can adjust the speed of learning also, right? So how it is going to, we are going to teach the system to learn a new thing. And all these things, of course, we will be studying in this particular subject. Yes, sir. Of course, we are going to see a lot of things, but in order to complete this introduction, I am just giving an idea about what is actually the comparison between a common uh, natural neuron and the artificial neuron, right? So here actually the natural neuron which is in our brain will be consisting of so many points, something like dendrites, nucleus, cell body, the impulses carried toward the cell body. So there is going to be a small voltage pulses which will be carried over to other neurons. And this axon is actually carrying the pulses. And these branches are called the branches of axon. And these are all axon terminals. So the data from this nucleus will be passed on to other neurons. And already I told you, there will be billions of similar neurons available in your brain. And all these neurons can operate simultaneously, right? Again, it is going to be voltage pulses. The pulses will be generated from one point and it will be going to other points. On the other hand, suppose if I am going to have this artificial intelligence, we can call it as a cell body, will be available. What are the functions of the neuron? We are going to separate it into two different things. One is actually a linear function, which can be written as an equation. And there is going to be a non-linear part, which is actually we call it as the activation function. And this particular neuron takes many number of inputs, right? It will be taking many number of inputs and it will be doing some computation. And after that, it will be given to a non-linear function, which may be an any activation function. Of course, we are going to study them and there will be a output will be given. And these inputs will be coming from the axons of the other neurons because this axon are actually the terminals, right? Which passes the signals from one neuron to some other neurons. So this is basically the comparison between a natural human brain, how the neuron functions. And this is going to be the artificial neuron, right? So you can just compare 
what is actually the human brain and we will try to mimic using a artificial brain. So, this is what we are going to study in this artificial neural network. So, before getting into that, we will just give a basic idea, right, about what is the human brain. Because if you understand the human brain and its functions, it will be easy for you to find out what is actually the depth of your artificial neural network or what, uh, what are the different applications of this artificial neural networks. Just, so of course, this is just for information and it is a formidably complex structure, right. The architecture is very, very, very complex, right. So, how your complete brain works, again nobody knows, right, because it is not taking, giving outputs at the right time, right. So, the outputs are again already we discussed, it is not, they are not reliable also. Right. So, it is a formidably complex structure and it contains uh, roughly 100 billion neurons. Right. So, the number of neurons is 100 billion neurons. Again, it is an approximate number and each neuron has around 10,000 synapses on an average. So, the total number of connections in a phenomenal 1000 trillion connections are there, right? around 10, 10 power 15 connections are there between neurons. Right, just think of a network which is having 1 billion devices, 100 billion devices connected and among this 100 billion devices, the number of connections will be around 1000 trillion connections are there, right. And a cubic millimeter, I think you should just think of a millimeter size, a cubic millimeter, 1 mm by 1 mm by 1 mm of brain contains almost 1 billion synapses. Right. So, this is actually the highly complex structure of our human brain. Then the optical recording techniques, how you are basically what are the methods to study the optical neuron. I think uh, it is something related to the, to the medical field. The first level is of course, uh, study the firing patterns of populations of neuron by brain slices. A high level picture obtained from imaging and other techniques such as positron emission tomography, PET. MRI, I think you should be knowing, right? MRI scans, everybody, it's, everyone actually, it's available in so many places. The computer aided tomography, CAT. And the EEG is again a no, uh, it's a no one, known word for everyone. Electroencephalography, right? And the confocal microscopy may, can give a three dimensional view of a Neuron. So, these are all some of the techniques by which we can study the uh, our normal brain. So, this is actually an, uh, uh, a cerebrum, right? A picture of a brain. So, here you can just see here, these are all, this is called as a frontal lobe. This is the left hemisphere. The, this package is actually called a cerebrum. This is the temporal lobe a brain stem which is actually connected to the spinal cord. This is called, this area is called cerebellum and this is occipital lobe. So, these are all some of the parts and each and every part of your brain will be having different functions. Here actually you can have a planning action is available here. Here you can have the thought process. Here you can have the motor functions, right? So, whatever the action activities you do, it is there. And this particular section carries the eye movement or vision. Then this is actually the word recognition, how to speak, right? And then this is actually speech and hearing. So each and every part of your human brain will be doing different functions to control your overall body, right? So there will be some stimulus. This is actually the source, right? You are stimulating something. And these stimulations will be actually received by the receptors. And this will be given to your network. And then the outputs will be given through the effectors and that will be called as the response. So, it is actually a reactive system, right? Whenever the input is given, that will be received by the receptors, will be given to the network and the network takes some uh, decisions. And according to the decision, the outputs will be given to the response through some effectors. So, this is actually the overall brain architecture. Again, a few points just to you can just go through this. I think you can parallel study with me. These are all some of the points which you have to just understand, right?
So it weighs about uh, three and a half pounds, right? What is actually the weight of a normal brine? And the outside sur surface has a wrinkled texture and is divided into gyri ridges and valleys. So it will be containing so many ridges and valleys. It's gyri and silsi. And there is a small projection at the back which is called as a cerebellum. I think you can just refer to the previous slide. Cerebellum. So this is actually the small part. This is actually called as the cerebellum. And the thin outer surface layers of gray matter and larger inner region are called as white matter. The cerebral cortex and the cerebellar, cere, uh, cerebral cortex and the cerebellar cortex. And the cortex of the cerebral hemisphere is around 3 to 4 mm thick. And the wrinkling ensures the cortical area is many times larger than that of a skull. So you can put so many new informations in your brain. Say for example, when a child is actually born, within the age of 3, he or she can understand so many persons. Right, who is mother, who is father, who is uncle, who is friend, who is enemy. So this type of image recognition basically how it happens. First actually we are seeing a new person. We are going to capture his image. Then we will learn whether that person is good or bad to us. Right. So based on that whenever he or she is again seen, we can immediately find out this person is a good person. This person is a bad person. So that, that understanding, right, that capturing of new things actually normally happens very fast in the human brain. And suppose if you want to store all this data, right, if you want to implement the same thing in a system, then there you need so much of terabytes, right. When a small kid of three years age, right, he or she can immediately understand most of the persons who are actually uh, available. He can, he or she can understand what are the objects available in the room or in the house. And he or she can understand what is actually the home, what is the outside, what is inside. He, he or she understands the temperature, sun, so many informations, right? So every day, every time actually we are giving so much of informations. And these informations when we can't simply store all these things in a computer, right? Because they are all actually totally irrelevant. Something will be related to optical, something will be related to voice oriented, something for thinking. So this much information is continuously fed and stored is in our human brain. So this wrinkling ensures that the cortical area is many times larger than that of the skull. Right, I have just taken one particular part of this. It is called a Broca and Wernix area. Here actually this particular section is mainly useful for how you are going to listen things, how you are going to understand, right? So this, in this case, the angular gyrus is actually the section which is going to make you understand the new things, right? And once you understand, that data will be passed on through this auditory cortex. And this Broca's area is actually a motor control area. So that if you want to, if you are given a new thing, right, somebody is speaking to you. So first you are listening something and you have to understand what is actually the language and what is actually what they want to convey, what is the information that is passed on. And once you understand the information, then you have to reply for that. Before that you have to understand, you have to give some answer. So here actually first you are getting some inputs and you will be processing something and then you will be giving your suitable outputs using this motion cortex or this by giving some response using your mouth and the lips. So this is an overall idea of just a simple section where your brain processes receiving the audio signals and making the audio signals. And the cerebellum is actually otherwise it's called as a hind brain already I told you it's in the back side of the thing which is actually connecting the spinal cord to your brain and it coordinates the movement of the head right and it mediates the sensory meter reflexes suppose what does actually reflex if you touch someone right immediately there will be a reflex right automatic even if you are think of something you are riding a bike and if you are just thinking of something if some person comes in immediately by reflex actually you will be reacting right so that is actually a sensory motor reflexes and the controls the fine grained coordination of muscle timing and activation and a remarkable both in regulatory and simplicity 
sections anywhere are indistinguishable from one another despite of differences in function. This is a, just a brief idea about the cerebellum. It contains of five types of cells. The largest cells of 15 million or so, it is called as a Purkinje cells and very large dendritic strays which can receive input signals from almost 80,000 presynaptic neurons. Right? So, every neuron is connected to other neurons and each and every decision will be taken from the input that is given by so much of neurons, something around 80,000 presynaptic neurons are giving an output to one particular neuron and it extends in two dimensions and inhibitory in nature and the electrical stimulation is actually done. All right. So, electrical stimulation of the cerebellum in humans never results in conscious experience. So, suppose if you are giving some electric pulses, then it will never result in the conscious experience. Right. And then we will be having the thalamus, which is actually called as a switching center. It is located in the head of your brain stem. And it comprises of different nuclei that receive sensory information about sensation, audition and new vision, right? Some, somebody is touching you, right? So, the tactile point and some, something you are hearing or something you are see, seeing something, right? So, all these things are actually handled by this thalamus and are responsible for the conduction of sensory and motor information, right? And uh, the CNS2 sensory and motor areas of the cerebral cortex mediates motor information from the called the cerebellum to the cerebral cortex. So, again another idea, another section of the thalamus which is going to handle the sensory audition and vision informations. Again a neocortex, right. So, neocortex is actually where your neurons actually reside, right. So, this neocortex is appears it is a thick convoluted sheet of 2 to 4 mm thick, right. It is actually a small sheet. And it covers the two cerebral hemispheres, it covers actually that particular part and it forms the largest structure of the human brain and if the total brain weight is around 1400 grams, right, in normal human being and the grey matter in which the cortical hemisphere weighs about 250 grams and it forms a continuous sheet of neural tissue with an area approximately 2200 square centimeters. And the continuity of the tissue is important for its function. It is actually conducting layer, right. So, something like um, uh, passing messages and passing information. So, continu continuity in the neocortex is a very important function if your brain has to function normally. And here actually we get into the first term called a neuron, right. So, here actually we are studying about the neuron. So, this will be having five layers already we discussed. So, the layer 1 is at the top. So, this is layer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those are so totally there are 6 layers of that. And the layer 1 at the top, it provides a means for interconnecting different cortical regions, has an extensive network of connections with the many different kinds of synapses, has very few neuron cell bodies, and most of the output to other cortical regions comes from layer 2 and 3, which respectively contains small and large pyramidal cells. Right. So, these pyramidal cells and actually this is in the shape of the pyramid and there are some non pyramidal cells. Right. So, there are two types of cells will be available here. And input from this thalamus are concentrated in layer 4 of the non pyramidal cells. The largest pyramidal cell whose axons leave the cortex for uh, subcortical uh, destinations. Layer 6 also contains pyramidal cells that send axons back to the thalamus. The white matter residing just below the cortex is composed of axons that carry messages to and from the cortical regions. Of course, these points are related to your bio, biomedical things and you just get an idea about what is the function, right? And this is actually the architecture of the biological neuron. Right. So, already we discussed what is actually a neuron and this type of neurons, so many billions and trillions of neurons are available in the human brains. So, in the next session, we will be starting with what is the architecture of the biological neuron and how the decisions are taken in the biological neurons. So, here we will take a break. Thank you.